Hey y'all, so I was bored and decided to paint my AR-15 and now I'm gonna tell you how I did it. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what I did to paint my rifle as far as prep work, painting process, all that. Starting with the prep work. Um, so there's a lot of back and forth and when people talk about painting their rifles on prep work that should or shouldn't be done. I'm gonna talk about what I did and why I did it. So. As far as priming the rifle, which is something a lot of people ask, I did not prime the rifle. Reason being is you just we all know the paint's gonna wear off, primer or not. Primer would just be an additional cost and additional painting time, curing time and all that. So I did not prime the rifle. What I did do was I did degrease the rifle. Uh, anybody that's done a lot of painting, you realize that uh, grease on something you're painting is just paint won't like that very much and you'll have a bad day. So I took rubbing alcohol, I wiped down the entire gun, right? Wiped down all the surfaces. Important thing that I uh, should mention is once you degrease your rifle, and you, there's a variety of different things you can use. Uh, I asked everybody and they said rubbing alcohol was the best thing to use. Um, the important thing is once you degrease your rifle, if you're gonna handle the rifle a lot, you're gonna wanna wear gloves. Reason being, there's oil on your hands. And once the oil on your hand gets back on the rifle, it, you might as well have not degreased it at all. Uh, what I did then after that was I went and masked off all the places I don't want paint. Mainly my Holosun 510C. It's all zeroed up, ready to go. I did not want paint all over it because there's several portions in here. You can see that uh, you don't want paint on, such as the lens and the um, uh, solar panel, right? So I masked that off. I masked off my rear sight because I did not want paint getting into the aperture and onto the adjustments. And I masked the front blade or the front post, I should say, uh, in my front sight because obviously I did not want paint on there, adjusting it or uh, messing with it at all. So I did that. Now, as far as the front of the gun, what I did was I actually, I know some people, they mask their entire muzzle device. I did not do that. What I did was I took a foam earplug stuck it down in the barrel, right? And that took the uh, problem away of having paint get down in the barrel, which you don't want. So that handled that. Um, I did stick a magazine in the gun. Reason being two things. When you stick a mag in the gun, you'll get a paint job that'll match the rest of the gun on it. And two, it plugs up this giant hole. Um, I did also do the trigger. Reason being, there's a little bit of gap here. You don't want paint to get down in there. Plus, I didn't want paint on the trigger or surface itself. Final thing for masking that I did was in here. So what I did was, obviously the dust cover I left closed, but even with the dust cover closed, paint can still get in there. So what I did was, was I took like a, um, a wad of paper and masking tape, and I actually kind of crammed it in here. I pulled the bolt out and left, and left the bolt out of the gun for the painting process but I put that in here with the dust cover cold, cl uh, closed so that uh, paint would not get in there. Basically the important thing when you're masking your gun is you wanna make sure paint doesn't get inside the gun. Um, paint can mess with tolerances, paint can you know, mess with surfaces that need to interact with each other. Just a good idea to keep paint outside of the gun. Um, so that was pretty much prep work as far as getting it ready. What I did was, um, and I'm gonna show you the video in a second, was I actually hung the rifle. There's a variety of different ways you can paint the rifle. For me, I found the best way was to hang it upside down so that I could paint both sides at once by uh, turning the rifle. I liked that over the, I've seen people put cardboard out and flip it over. I like that over uh, that method because I do it all at once and keep get a more consistent painting. So now on to the painting. <laughs> Yeah.
that took about an hour and a half. Um, quite, quite a lot of coat of paint to get this accomplished, but I think it was, it was kind of fun doing it. So now I'm going to talk about what I did. So first I'm going to mention the colors because I have already got asked about the colors when I put some pictures up on Instagram. So colors I used was Rust-Oleum Camouflage. This was the 2X Camo Sand. This was my base coat. I did three coats of that um, to get the whole rifle one color. Then I did the Krylon Fusion All-in-One Paint and Primer Matte Spanish Moss. Then I went back and I did the Krylon Color Max Paint and Primer Matte Coffee Bean. Now, I went with a little bit different colors. You know, most people use the just the Rust-Oleum Camouflage, and they work fine. Um, I went with a few different colors just because I wanted a little more of a pop to the paint. Um, I, I wasn't super worried about it blending in with anything. I mean, yes, this kind of would blend in with certain things, but I wasn't super worried about uh, that. And I know a lot of people use the Rust-Oleum Camouflage. Again, I wanted this to be a little bit different, have a little bit different look than what most people use. Um, so starting out, I did three coats of this. Reason was I wanted the whole rifle um, to be one color so I have an even thing to start with. Um, it's important also, if you're gonna do a camo job, your best bet is to use your lightest color first because when you go to your darker colors, it's harder to cover up a dark color with your lighter color. So basically, um, three coats of that to cover the entire rifle, get everything one color. So now, once you do that, once you have your whole rifle, the first base color, you don't have to worry about covering the rifle. Like that's something that I was worried about in the very beginning was making sure to get all the angles covered, everything covered with paint so that there wasn't, you know, you didn't look at it from a different angle and be, oh darn, you know, like that whole section's black because I didn't hit it with anything. Um, so once I got that right, then I moved in with the color, did a few coats of the green, a few coats of the brown, and voila. Um, important thing to remember, when you're adding your color to your camo job, less is more. Uh, lighter coats, more lighter coats is better than a few heavy coats, because when you do heavy coats, paint can run, it can bubble, it can be weird. Uh, just better to do lighter coats and, um, you know, not have those issues. Drying time. I gave about seven to ten minutes drying time between coats. Most cans on them, they'll they'll state recoat within one hour or after 24 hours. Again, messing with the curing. If you uh, don't abide by that, you run into the possibility of having issues. So I wanted to keep my painting to about an hour and ended up going a little bit over because, you know, that these things happen. But um, I wanted to give just enough time to let the paint set up before applying the next color. Uh, so once I did that, that really pretty much was it. It was just a matter of putting on the paint. Um, don't be afraid to go super light when you start doing the camo. And that was something that uh, you can probably see in the video is I didn't go super heavy in the beginning. Like when I started with the green, I did small sections of where I knew I wanted that. And then as I added on the additional coats to bring the color out, I went a little bit wider and a little bit wider so that I didn't have um, big sections of green to just start out. Because the thing to keep in mind is once you put that color on, especially if you've got your base coat already on like that, you can't, it's really hard to go back and take it off. Like basically if, if I had covered the gun in way too much green and brown, I would have had to have gone back with this and applied even more paint. And the more colors and the more layers you apply, the thicker the paint gets, the more issues you could run into. So other than that, it's just, you know, it's about having fun. Um, there is no right or wrong way to do a camo job. When it comes to patterns, it's all on what you want, what you're looking for. Um, but, you know, this was, again, this was the end result. I have better pictures up on the Instagram of it. You know, it's kind of hard to get pictures in good light with a, a rifle like this, especially with the matte paint. But, um, yeah, that was pretty much what I was going for. And I think I achieved the uh, the whole three-color German World War II camo look I was going for. But, yeah, just an uh, important thing to have fun with it. Now, as far as curing time, that's something else that I notice a lot of people talk about online. Um, paint, once it's dry, they think it's good. That's not, that's not real. That's not the truth. Um, paint, once it dries, it's set up. But there's a thing called curing, which is something to be careful about. Um, especially on plastics and stuff, paint can take a while to cure. And in fact, a, a couple of these can state that if you're painting plastic, give it a week to cure. Because what happens is even though the paint is dry to the touch, it's not completely set up and hardened. 
So if you paint your rifle and an hour later you pick it up and start handling it, um, what will happen is you run the risk of you're going to start seeing fingerprints and stuff if you apply a lot of pressure to the paint because the paint's not completely set up. So what I did was, you know, again, it was hanging upside down. I painted the rifle, let it sit, and then I actually let this rifle sit and, sus and uh, sit and hang for uh, a week straight so that it was cured. And when I went to handle it, I didn't have to worry about leaving marks on the gun or the paint coming off or anything. Again, we're not painting a Picasso here, so it's not super important. But if you want your paint job to look the nicest, the longest, um, you know, letting it cure for that week isn't a bad idea. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how I painted it. You know, that's how the prep work I did, the paint work I did. I'm sure there's a few more things I could cover, but I don't want this to be a 40-minute video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below, and have a good day.